Hello everyone, welcome to our introduction to machine learning course. Today we'll be building a machine learning project end to end. The problem that we are trying to tackle today is detecting whether an image of a human cell has been infected with malaria or not. So even today, millions of cases of malaria are reported every year in India. So can we build a solution that might assist microscopists in area where there are limited resources or perhaps even increase their detection accuracy? And in this process, we'll also learn some of the common approaches in computer vision and machine learning, and especially when it comes to dealing with image data. This data set was collected at a hospital in Bangladesh and made public by researchers at NIH. So let's get started. First, make sure that you have the following packages installed that we'll be using in our class today. Next, let's go ahead and download the data set that is provided. So once you have downloaded it, you will see that there are two classes of images which are there. The one is parasitized images and the other is uninfected images. So essentially we have in the first folder images of cells that have been infected by malaria. And in the second one, these are the cells from a healthy human. So what labs usually do is stain the blood specimen with a specific chemical and that gives the parasite a distinctive appearance on the microscope image. So visually we can see that it is pretty easy to make out. But can we also teach our machine learning algorithms to detect such patterns? The first thing that we will do is prepare our data set. Right now we have these images. So how do we convert this to a more suitable representation? That is, how do we extract features from our data set? So here are the set of operations that we will perform. The first thing that we'll do is convert it to a grayscale image because there isn't much of information in the color as such, but we are more interested in these patterns. Next, we'll apply a feature extraction technique called contour detection which will essentially mark all the bounded regions or contours in these images. Next, we'll get the areas of each of these contours and store them as our features. So for example, for an infected cell image like this, we'll get about four contours, the three smaller patterns over here and the one big cell itself. But for an uninfected image, we should get only one bigger contour, that is the cell boundary. Let's see, how do we write this in code? Let's in all our necessary packages. Then we'll iterate through all the files in our dataset folder. Note that we will be running the script once for each class and since we have two classes we'll run this script twice. Then as we saw earlier we'll read the image, apply a Gaussian blur. So with the Gaussian blur we are trying to smoothen the image. Here we are saying to OpenCV that use a mask of size 5,5. The bigger this mask, the more will be the blurring. So try out different values and see if you get better results. Convert it to a grayscale image because there isn't much of information in the color as such, but we are more interested in these patterns. This variable called contours will store all the contours that we detected. So let's iterate over it and get the areas of all contours. And in the end, we'll just store this data to a CSV file. All good until here, you should see a dataset.csv file which is generated in your CSV folder. Now you can add a header to this in the script itself or if you're lazy like me, you could do it over here. All right, so once we have our dataset prepared, let's go ahead and build a classifier using scikit-learn. As always, we'll import scikit-learn and other required packages. So go ahead and use pandas to load this data frame. We have done this several times before. If you're not sure, check on Google which method from Pandas library will you use to load the CSV file in our program. So what you could do is use the read underscore CSV method that Pandas provides us. So now we have our data set loaded. The next thing that we want to do is separate our features and labels from the data frame. So what should I write over here to have all my features in this variable called X and my labels in Y? Go ahead and look it up if you are not sure. Guys, it is important that when you are watching these sessions, you must try out these things first. Otherwise, even after completing several of such videos, 
you won't learn or remember anything. Now, if we got it right, what we could do over here is get our features by dropping the label column from our data frame on axis one. Note that this operation by default is in place. So our original data frame is not affected. And then getting the labels is straightforward. Next, let's separate our training and test data sets. So this time we'll use a method from SkyKidLearn called train test split to make our life easier. Let's go ahead and build our model. So do you have any suggestions on which classifier we should use over here? Since the data set that we have is relatively large, I'll be using a random forest classifier. If we had a smaller data set, I would first try SVM. And again, let me know in the comments if by using some other classifiers or by tuning these hyperparameters, you are able to get better results. Let's fit our training data. And we should also save our model using joblib because in most real world scenarios, you'll be training your models initially and then you'll save them to make predictions in real time and not retrain your model every time, obviously, right? Next, let's make the predictions on our test data set. So what should I say over here? Yep, model.predict. Now let's get the classification report of our model to get a sense of how well did we do. So as you see over here, we are getting an average precision and recall of about 0.9, which is not state of the art, but not bad either. The precision over here will give you a sense of how much error is present in your model and recall will tell you how many times you are getting error. There is usually a trade-off between these two. So something like F1 score, which is a harmonic mean of these two, give you a better sense of how well your model is performing. So all right, guys, that's it for today's project. Go ahead and try out different reprocessing techniques and feature extraction techniques. And tell me in the comments if you are getting better results. My challenge to you is, can you build a neural network so that we can altogether skip the feature extraction step that we did and perhaps even get better results? Let me know in the comments if you get stuck somewhere and I'll be more than happy to guide you. Till then, goodbye.